Is that working? Cool. So sorry. So, um, Nikki, welcome. Where are you from, Nikki? Dalcombe. From? Dalcombe. Welcome. It's lovely to see you. What, what's it like there today? What's the weather like? What's, what are we missing out on? Clear blue sky, gorgeous sunshine, a little breeze. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. In a little while, if possible, let's see a bit of the outside world there. We'd love to see it. Duncan, where are you from? North Norfolk. Oh, gorgeous too. What's it like there today? Beautiful sunshine. Uh, lovely and warm. What's the temperature? Six, ooh, only 16 degrees. Feels like 20. I know, right? And I, I looked at the map this morning and North Scotland, they're in the, in the mid-twenties today. It's bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I can see that some more guests are arriving. If you are a guest from somewhere that is a destination, just put your screen on so that we can see that you're here um, and, and I'll tell you what this is all about in just a moment. Uh, who else has just said hello? Hi Carmen, where are you from? Hello, I'm, I'm um, from Brighton and Hove. Right, lovely to see you. I, I know what that's like because I'm not a million miles away. It's another gorgeous day in the south, right? Yes, it is, absolutely. Uh, Eva says, can you refresh? I'm certain there are some other guests online, but I'll get started. Um, so that we don't waste too much of your time. And whilst um, I'm just bending down, you can see my bald spots because I'm refreshing uh, a deck that the students have made. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you can all see this deck being refreshed. Yeah. And I'll explain what this is all about. Um, welcome to School Communication Arts. We are a, an ad school. We teach people to, to come up with ideas, to communicate, to find solve problems. And my students are on a one year course and they were about two thirds of the way through. And we faced lockdown and we just didn't stop learning and we're just enjoying working, creating work. In two months time, they're gonna be out looking for jobs. So they're now trying to make work that's interesting and also that's useful. And we hope today that they've made work that's interesting and useful to you. Um, so. If you see work for your town, turn your camera back on, enjoy the presentation and give us some feedback. But enjoy the, the presentations for some other towns too. My, my challenge to my students was this. Fairly soon, we're gonna be able to, to, to leave our homes and go on holiday and do a, do a Cummings, right? Talk to the country and check our eyesight. So um, some towns might welcome some tourism and some towns might not want some tourism. Let's work out what we can do to communicate for towns uh, in this world post COVID. That's the brief, putting towns on the map. Um, so with that said, I'm going to invite you now to enjoy the presentation. Students will share their work um, and we'll whisk through them about two minutes per town. Uh, and if you've got any feedback to your town, put your screen on and, and we'd love to hear from you. Is that all right? Here we go, who's up first? Um, I'll turn my camera off as we welcome all the way from over there. Please welcome Marley and Carly. Hi, yeah, good afternoon. Hi, Duncan. Um, we are actually doing Norfolk. So next slide, please. Oh, sorry, it's just lagging on mine. I can't tell. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I actually used to live in Norwich uh, for university and one of my favourite things to do there was to go to Horsey Beach and see the seals. And so when we were researching a bit more about the coastline, we discovered Blakeney and absolutely fell in love with it. Um, not only does it have the seals, but you have the point that moves. There are ranges, there are 270 species of birds there. And we just thought it'd be such a great place for Pete to put on the map and for people to really appreciate and visit. So we've come up with a concept for you. Next slide, please. So our concept is the Blakeney Safari. So we really felt that Blakeney did feel like uh, you'd be able to go and visit and it would feel like a, a safari without actually having to leave England. Um, so next slide, please. So we've made some posters demonstrating this, kind of trying to use that safari vibe. Um, and yeah, just showing off all the amazing wildlife that you have there and the amazing rangers and everything. Um, next slide, please. 
So one of the initiatives that we thought would be really interesting, if possible, we were reading the blog um, and mm -hmm. the rangers were talking about being able to drive along the coastline. So we thought, wouldn't it be amazing if they would be able to give guided tours via the cars if people are still in a position where they're not able to walk by foot um, and let children and families and wildlife lovers around the country just really appreciate what Blakeney has to offer. Uh, we thought that this could be extended to a map um, and it would show the best points to drive, the best routes to walk and also it would be um, kind of crowdsourced so people could put pins about where they saw certain birds or really good spots that they enjoyed. Next slide please. So we've created a radio ad for you as well just to kind of give an example about what we want the communications to look like. If you want to play that, Mark. If you look out of your window, you will see grey seals sunbathing just along the marsh. Yes, that's a pup there, about six weeks old. Can't see it, or well, you could in Blakeney. The Blakeney Safari, the seaside that feels far from home. Visit blakeneysafari.com to explore. And we would also feature um, in magazines such as Mums Net, the blog, Time Out, and Bird Watching, just to kind of get the word out there a little bit more. Next slide, please. Um, we also thought we could do direct mail. So the same way loads of children are putting up rainbows in their windows, we could send seal and wildlife stickers um, that show that you can see it right from your window and also means that any passers-by would um, hear about Blakeney. We also thought there was a great opportunity for merchandising and being able to sell fluffy toys and tokens um, and souvenirs from Blakeney that actually support the wildlife and the rangers there. And that is, yeah. What a Thank great you. start team. Thank you so much. Uh, Duncan, this is your, your turf. Anything you want to talk about or share or ask? Oh, Duncan, you're on mute at the moment. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, really, really fantastic. Um, Blakeney is a wonderful uh, area in North Norfolk, hugely popular and um, I mean you're absolutely right when you said at the beginning about how we will need to very much kickstart our tourism so I don't think anything like this is existing in, in Blakeney so it's a really great idea. Um, some of the things that also, I mean wildlife is brilliant, it's hugely popular for sailing as well. Mm. Um, it, could, it could link in, couldn't it? With, you could almost buy a package because you could go on the sort of seal trips tours mm. and then yeah. do something like this, the safari tour as well. So there's kind of links that you could do with other people that are um, organising tourism type related activities in the area. I yeah. like window stickers and the merchandising that could really propel Blakeney. I thought it was brilliant, really, really creative, um, fantastic. Thank you, very glad you like it. Thank you, Duncan. We'll make sure you get a copy of this video so you can share it with anybody in your in your community that can help make it happen and meet up with Carly and Marley to do so. Thank you. I love that. Nice. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Good thank start. You. Well done, team. Who's next? Lauren, Erin and Dean. Welcome. Hi. Uh... Hi, guys. Um, hey, guys. How you doing? Duncan, how you going? <laughs> so um, if you go to the next slide, please. So we thought we would do um, sort of like the beaches around um, Somerset uh, because Glastonbury and a lot of music festivals have had to cancel. Um, but what we found out is um, Western Supermare and a lot of the other beaches around there have lots of empty beach huts, which they haven't been able to sell or rent out. And they've also had problems with this in like past years, not just because of Corona. Next slide, please. Um, so we wanted to host private performances in the beach huts and bring sort of like Glastonbury there. Um, next slide. Um, so yeah, this is a poster for it. Um, one of the one of the um, stages anyway. I'm told at Glastonbury is Glastonbury on Sea. So we just be making this um, the piece de la resistance. And um, Aaron? Hey. If you go to the next slide. Yeah, so um, the Glastonbury already have a lot of this stuff, which they already made for um, Glastonbury, but haven't been able to use. So this all like exists. Um, and we thought we could use some of the other like beach huts as well for selling like the local like 
beer and like cider and stuff, which they do at the festival anyway. Um, and it would work by uh, people sort of buy tickets online for a select artist. Um, and it'll be 10 minute sets for just like a private sort of like viewing for like families um, or just with people from your household. Next slide. Is a quick mock-up of what these would look like. There'd be a plastic partition uh, between the barman and the people, for obvious reasons. Nice. Next slide, please. And then um, also, um, Glastonbury on Sea um, sell like little postcards at the actual, actual festival. So we thought how we could use those is we could um, make them into printing like the tickets for people to send out to them and for their home. And that's it. Thank you. Is there anybody from, I'm not sure there is, from Western Supermare in this call? If there's not, maybe, Amy, are you in this call by any chance, Amy? Um, or Marcia? Max is great. Can we okay. make sure that Western Supermare get sent a copy of this video, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Great, good work. Thank you, team. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Ellie and Janisa, hi. Hi everyone. Do we have anyone for Blackpool in the room? If not, we'll just make sure that they get it. So yeah, again, we'll make sure Blackpool gets it. Thank you. Um, um, but they really want to see a video, so I will send it to them. Awesome. Okay, awesome. All right, so Blackpool is the Las Vegas of the North. It's quirky, personal, and perfect for people that are looking for adventure. Next slide, please. Now, after lockdown, a lot of couples have survived the time together and want to take the next, next step, which is the biggest adventure of their life, getting married. Next slide, please. But there's also hundreds of thousands of couples that were meant to get married between March and possibly August or even September that could not get married and are quite frustrated and desperate about that. Next slide, please. So we want to introduce Get Married in Blackpool. So that could be uh, a 48 sheet, for example. Next slide, please. Or for example, love your wedding train, uh, which would be a wedding set uh, in the famous tram in Blackpool. Next slide. And then we've also got ads for specific packages. So we could have a drive through setup. We could have weddings in the tower, on the beach, etc. cetera. Uh, next slide, please. And we launch our scheme with a 48 hour marathon. Um, so that's a continuous stream of weddings in our brand new drive through service. Uh, next slide, please. We thought we could put wedding veils behind emergency glass frames in service stations all over the country and offer discounts to couples who find them and bring them to Blackpool. Uh, next slide, please. And then we can partner with local companies to sell socially distanced wedding dresses. So that's the two meter space we all need. Uh, next slide, please. And the same again to make wedding rings from local sea glass. And that's us. Thanks. Thank you. That's great. They've got to watch that. That's come a long way, isn't it, in a day. Good work. Thank you, team. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are um, you? Hello. Good, thanks. Okay. Next slide, please. Um, so what's so, your, what's your uh, talent? We're, Sorry. Doing, we're doing great Yarmouth. And is there anybody from Great Yarmouth here by any chance? It's in Norfolk, but not, I wouldn't say North Norfolk. Okay, again, we'll, we'll make sure that we tag them when we release the video. Great. Okay, so Great Yarmouth, even though it's coined as Norfolk's flagship seaside town, um, uh, a lot of people, it's actually quite really realistically quite popular with the locals and a lot of people who travel from around the UK end up leaving uh, end up not enjoying the charm, the retro charm it has, um, but we disagree. We think that the seaside nostalgia is something special and special enough to actually use it to promote it and spend, um, encourage people to spend a summer in Great Yarmouth. So next uh -huh. slide, please. So introducing Great Yarmouth summer of 70s nostalgia. Next slide. Yeah, so we start as a postal campaign, um, highlighting uh, parts of Great Yarmouth's uh, history. So the, the fishing and also uh, the iconic uh, rocks, uh, the candy, uh, and also uh, the design the feature, the, the skyline uh, of the city uh, with, uh, with also a reminder of like the beach and, and the sea on it, or 
uh, and of course uh, the typography is uh, is from the 70 uh, as the colors yeah next slide please um to target people across the uk with um kind of uh place photo booths like 70s photo booths in specific train stations and um bus stops specifically in London um, um, where people could then kind of take photos with a 70s look and feel and then encourage and hopefully get people more interactive encouraged to go up to Great Yarmouth it'll be um, a long branding so next slide please yes and uh, traditionally uh, seaside chips um, were packed in uh, newspapers so so we want to continue that tradition and uh, and so on 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 the, the seaside ships, you, you can find now the, uh, a map uh, which uh, indicates uh, um, the 70s landmark of Great Yarmouth. Next slide, please. Uh, and also, uh, we want to launch a limited edition vinyl uh, that is only available uh, in Great Yarmouth. Uh, but if you don't have the, change, the chance to catch it, uh, you can still get on Spotify to to listen to the playlist and also um, we want to feature artists uh, from a uh, musician from Great Yarmo. Yeah. Next slide. Thank you. Great, thank you. And again, we'll make sure that they get to see this. We'll try our yeah. best. Hey, Ollie. Maddie with you. Hello. Well, hopefully not with you, but different. Hello. Members. Hey, Maddie. Sorry. Um, and who's please. your town? Uh, we're doing Eastbourne. Eastbourne. Is there anybody from Eastbourne in this call? I don't no? Yes. Okay. Is yes, there? Yes, there is. Oh, fantastic. You don't don't feel you have to put your camera on. You're welcome to join in anytime. Maddie, you. Ollie, you've got an audience. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> um, so, as you know, Eastbourne's got attractions, castles, museums, galleries, and the UK's only five-star seaside hotel. Um, but... Who cares? Because the only thing that matters on holiday is sun, and it's why we love going abroad. So next slide, please, Mark. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, and Eastbourne's the sunniest place in the UK, so that's all you need to say. Um, so we've got a bunch of posters ready for you. Um, next slide, please, Mark. Yeah, it's another one. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, so we, we want to launch a bunch of, of, of micro ads on Instagram stories that will um, flash the sun and have a nonstop live stream of the sun on Eastbourne's Instagram from sunrise to sunset. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, we'll also cover um, Eastbourne's Instagram with Sunflare's photos all over. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, and we'll hijack uh, search engine results for the Sun newspaper, so that whenever someone searches for the Sun, they'll actually take them to the Eastbourne website. Yeah, because the Sun doesn't actually pay for their top spot, they're just the most searched. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, and then, who doesn't love a bit of free advertising? Or you might have to slide someone a tenner. Um, next slide, please, Mark. Um, and you can tag all the tanning salons and all the places that don't get much sun, um, letting them know that you can come get it for free in Eastbourne. Next slide, please, Mark. And finally, Eastbourne will be the first city to be twinned with a celestial body. And that celestial body will, of course, be the sun in our very own Milky Way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that's so brilliant, funny. <laughs> Margaret, I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts of that, please. Thank you. That looks really fun. I look forward to receiving the um, video of it so I can pass it on to my tourism department. <laughs> and I will do. I can tell you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very Thank much, you. Margaret. Thank you. Well done, team. Oh. Do I have some blank screens? Oh, there we go. Who's up next? It's uh, Scarlett and Chloe. Hi. Hello. Hi, Who are you looking for? We're doing Margate. Is there anybody from Margate with this call? No, again, we'll do our best to make sure they okay. can see this. Okay. Um, so 
if you could go to the next slide. Um, so Margate is in Kent, which we know to be the Garden of England. Um, and when we were thinking about Margate, we were thinking it's so unusual, it's such an odd and quirky place. If Kent is the Garden of England, then Margate is the Garden of England's gnome. So our campaign is introducing this mascot to Margate. The next slide, please. So these are some posters that show our gnomes enjoying um, a roller coaster at Dreamland, some uh, nude bath sunbathing, uh, and the Turner Gallery. And next, next slide, please. We'll also create um, an influencer called Nomi Campbell, um, who will basically be constantly on holiday in Margate and offer discounts to people visiting Margate so you could get 20% off if you use her code Nomi or 25% off Nomi25 um, but only for attractions around Margate. Next slide please. Uh, and this because um, St Pancras is where you get the train to Margate from from London it's only 90 minutes so we're gonna put some gnomes around letting people know um, along with messages saying um, why we've chosen the gnome because it's such a quirky place. And that's it for us. And that's it. That is great. And um, I see Marcia has put into chat that they're planning to watch this later when they do oh, that. I hope you enjoyed it. That was, that was worth waiting for. Uh, thanks, Chloe. Thanks, Scarlett. Thank you. Who's up next? Andy and Zoe. Hi, team. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Hello. Hi Andy, who, Hi, Andy. who are you representing? We are representing Port Marion initially and then Northumberland just after that. And is there anybody in, in those necks of the woods in this call? No, again, we'll do our best to make sure they see it. Cool. Sweet. Uh, next slide then, please. Thanks. So, Port Marion, next slide please, Mark. Yes, uh, to begin at the beginning. Four million Brits travel to Italy every year, but this year, even the people that can go, if they don't cancel the holidays, probably aren't that sure about it. Now then. Port Marion looks just like an Italian village, except it's in North Wales. Oh, there's Lush. So, what if we get people with Italian trips booked to cancel their holidays and go to, the port, go to port Marion instead? Next slide, please. So we started off with a few posters. Next slide, please. Or whatever. Next slide. Next slide. Um, so we'll also do quite specific targeting to people uh, with banner ads on like EasyJet and British Airways. When people are going online to check whether their flights have been cancelled, we'll have a little pop up that says if they cancel their trip, we'll give them money off at Port Marion. Next slide, please. Uh, we'll also use um, SEO to target people searching, can I go to Italy? Um, so a little advert will pop up suggesting that perhaps you book a holiday to Port Marion instead. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, one thing Port Marion doesn't have is the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but once we build the Leaning Tower of Welsh Cakes, who's going to care? Uh, so I guess we'll get local bakers to uh, all contribute their Welsh cakes and see if we can create a Guinness World Record for the tallest tower of Welsh cakes. Next the slide, world. please. <laughs> We'll also yes. take over all of the Italian restaurants nearby uh, and make sure they're selling Welsh rarebit pizza. Rise of gender fluidity. Is um, <laughs> next slide, please. Um, and if anyone is planning a trip to Italy and has already bought their guidebook, they'll be able to exchange it for free for a Welsh guidebook in any Waterstones, which we'll partner with. Next slide. Yeah, we'll also intercept people turning up at airports to fly to Italy and offer them a free holiday in Port Marion in exchange for tearing up their airline ticket just for a little bit of PR. Next slide, please. 
That's cool. That was, that was cool. Marianne. Great, that's yeah. great. I'm sure that they're going to love that. And this next one is for Northumberland. Again, not sure they're in the call. Um, Marcia, Amy, Max, I'm sure will do everything they can to make sure that somebody from that region sees this. Um, is this a bit short? I'm just conscious of time. Yes. Yeah, we'll run cool. through it. Okay, on, team. Cheers. Um, so a lot of us are desperate for a holiday, but terrified at the thought of joining crowds of people on busy beaches. But Northumberland is the sparsest county in the country. Um, so we want to position it as a great place to continue social distancing. Um, so next slide, please. So we've just done a few posters. That one says coastal distancing and then visit Northumberland. There's nobody here. And then if you can just flick through, there are a few different poster executions. So this is stay seaside. The next one and surf isolation and next one please so this is a 48 sheet c no one and, and then we think there are lots of opportunities to go way bigger than even 96 sheets uh, for example like the one in waterloo that uh, make most of the space that one says the normal normal that's a new normal the next slide please and um, we'll also take over the northumberland gk Instagram uh, and and carry on our social distancing messages on the grid. Next slide, please. And also in the stories, so you tap through and there's just loads of empty space. <laughs> Next slide, please. That's that. Oh, oh. Cool. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Tim. Thanks Thank very much. All right, we got next Alex and Eva. Anybody from Dungeness with us? You got anybody from that area? No, again, we'll do our best. Hello, team. Hello. Hello. Um, so, Dungeness in Kent. Uh, you either love it or you hate it. All of these reviews are about it. So, the World West meets the post-apocalyptic, a natural paradise. Uh, it's home to over a third of the UK's plant life. So, it's got that string in its bow. The most romantic spot in the UK. Britain's only desert, apparently. The end of the world. Um, so we thought this all sounded very cinematic uh, and also home of Derek Jarman, who is an amazing art house film director. Um, so we wanted to turn uh, Dungeness into a place where people who haven't had their fix of cinema during the lockdown uh, turn it into a destination for them to go to, especially because independent cinemas in the UK are unlikely to open until next year and are really struggling. Uh, so next slide, please. So stage one is to set up uh, Dungeness as the most cinematic holiday destination in the UK. Uh, so using sort of real photos of Dungeness, uh, explaining why it's so atmospheric and sensory. Um, so this is a real photo and it says the unique, the unique way sound travels on shingle means that whispered I love you can be heard half a mile away. It's a good job we're Europe's largest, largest shingle. Europe's largest shingle beach then, it's a tongue twister. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is Derek Jarman's home, which was recently done up three and a half million pounds by the art fund. So it's a real sort of destination for art house and independent film lovers. Um, bleak landscapes, emotional vistas, depressing greyness. No wonder Derek Jarman thought of his most, his most powerful films here. Um, and then at stage two, if you go to the next slide, please, is to actually bring a sort of immersive drive up cinema to the shore of Dungeness, um, working with local vendors and industry to make it the most immersive cinema experience possible. Uh, so that starts from local papers, like the local Dungeness rag, um, releasing what film's gonna be shown in our, in our cinemas through sort of cryptic stories through there, um, with Easter eggs hidden in there. Um, working with Victoria's Council to send exclusive premiere tickets when you book travel, uh, des travel tickets to, to Dungeness. Um, working with local traders to theme food around each screening and partnering with Airbnb hosts to theme the stays. Um, even getting custom downloadable sat-nav directions on your Waze or your TomTom -tom in like a, a movie voiceover style. Um, next slide, please. So that's just an example of how the, the, the cinema could look. Um, and then this would all build up to Dungeness becoming home of the UK's hottest independent film festival. Um, so 
this is a bit of a parody of Little Miss Sunshine, which is a very well-known independent film. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. Um, Mad Max, the original, was an indie film in itself. So we just wanted to show off the, the quirkiness of Dungeness. We think the movie tie-in can sort of run throughout the year. You could theme it for the different times of the year. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, yeah, sorry, as I was saying, you could theme it throughout the year. You could do a horror screening uh, in the winter. Uh, you could do Valentine's Day. There's a, a steam railway that runs there, so you could sort of put on dinners on there. Um, but we think it's, it's nice because it's got uh, appeal that can last beyond just the summer and really put Dungeness on the map as a, a champion of independent British film. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, it's come along a long way as well, hasn't it, in a day? Thank you. Hey, Moon Raj. Hey, Rachel. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, team. Uh, who are you representing? Scarborough. Scarborough. Anybody from Scarborough with us? Again, I'm sure the office will do everything they can to, to have Scarborough see this, this video. Next slide, please. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, summer is cancelled, holidays are cancelled, tans are cancelled. It's in the meme, guys. Look at it. Next slide, please. But there is a saving grace. Um, although we won't be able to go abroad this summer, we will be able to travel inside the UK. Unfortunately, staycations at seaside towns don't normally scream luxury or class. Next slide, please. Until now, introducing Scarborough surprisingly luxurious vacation in the UK. Next slide, please. So these are posters that will launch the campaign. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, next slide, please. Um, so the idea is that Scarborough's Grand Hotel will host a gala and a karaoke night, and it's a unique evening experience. And it's perfect for millennials who have been stuck at home, have been dying for a reason to dress up, um, and anyone staying in a room can join because prices start at thirty-one pounds, so it's affordable as well as luxurious. Next slide, please. Um, to activate this campaign, we'll be using this experiential where we'll have a caricature artist in the main cities that will draw people and add like additional pearls and monocles and feathers and top hats, highlighting who they could be if they go to Scarborough. Next slide, please. And pop-up selling Scarborough's signature mega cones will be sold with sugar diamonds on top. Next slide, please. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Good work, thank you, team. All right, Medford and Botner. Hello. Hi, Alex. Hey, Christopher. Hi. How are you? Doing? You okay? Yeah, good. Thank you, mate. Who are you representing? We are doing Linmouth. Winmouth. Lovely. Anybody? Anybody on the call? Anyone from Devon? Woo! <laughs> What's that? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Again, we'll we'll do our best to make sure that that somebody watches this later. Yeah, Alfie says woo back to you. Are you in nice Devon, one. Alfie? I don't know where you are. <laughs> in London. Ah. All right. So, um, uh, I went to Linmouth a year ago, and it's off. Um, it's on the coast of Devon, and it's a beautiful place. It's got craggy cliffs, but it's got something a little more to it. It's very atmospheric. And I remember I was staying at this hotel on the edge of a cliff, and this fog just came out of nowhere and just surrounded us. And it was a clear, sunny day, and then it just dissipated out of nowhere. Um, and it almost kind of feels like you're in another world. Um, so looking at this, we thought, you know, there's a lot of qualities about it that are like the world of a video game. So we thought, let's promote Linmouth like a video game with uh, trailers and little teasers of the scenery that you can expect. Next slide, please, Mark. So yeah, we would generate a lot of hype and mystery around this video game by showing how mysterious this place is and how, how how um what's the best way to put it? How much of an air it's got this place has got? Yes, um, 
Mysteria is going to be a game launching soon in September. Next slide, please. And we would leak this to various um, news outlets like Gamer Ranks and GameSpot UK, where we would make it out as like the next best thing coming. And we'd have like gameplay walkthroughs and all these great things or display the area. We could also um, stream these videos on Twitch as well. Uh, just to show how epic it is and similar to the landscape <laughs> we'll see in games. Yeah, doing Let's Plays on Twitch. <laughs> Next slide, please. Oh. I'm sorry, it's just gone and bummed. One sec. <laughs> uh, go on. Oh, no, don't be on slide one. Oh, no. I think we are number... Oh, there we are. There we are. Bonus. Okay. Next one. Uh, so when it comes to launch, we'll actually um, release this VR experience of uh, Linmouth under Mysteria, where people can experience 360, what it looks like, and kind of like an open landscape game where they'll be able to walk around and after 500 steps, they'll be prompted to actually be able to book a holiday in actual Litmouth. So book a holiday here and then you'll be able to go around to the different uh, like inns and pubs and different like quick little places and be able to book a place on B Airbnb. Great. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, oh. yeah, we're hoping that, you know, this will drum up a lot of press for them and then uh, when it comes out that this is actually a real place, people get really excited and be like, oh my gosh, I can go to this alternate world for real and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank good you. Work. All right, Rolly and Tia, how are you? Hello, we're good. Hello. We're uh, for Whitby. Hello. For Whitby? Yep. Lovely. Anybody from Whitby with us? No. Oh. Again, we'll do our best to get somebody from Whitby to see this later. But for now, the floor is all yours. Cool. Uh, next slide, please, Mark. So Whitby is a place that inspired the story of Dracula. And also, they're really well known for the goth weekend, where goth fans let loose their uh, goth fans let their dark side loose. So uh, we were thinking, how can we make young people see Whitby as an exciting place where they could explore their unexpected dark side. So um, we come to this idea. Next slide, please, Mark. Um, dark side welcome visit would be the seaside town with a dark twist. So uh, the next slide will have some posters. Yeah, so these are the uh, posters for our campaign. And we're thinking of um, putting them in non-traditional places with touristy ads like the tube or buses. But instead, we we're thinking a good place to place them would be alter, um, alternative music venues and also in universities to attract young people. Uh, next slide, please. So at the moment, um, Whitby doesn't really have a social media presence. And because we're trying to reach a new audience for Whitby, um, we thought a quiz on how dark your soul is for social media would um, draw people in and get them intrigued and then they would find out that everyone no matter who has a little bit of darkness inside and they can come to Whitby and experience that and also learn about the dark story and dark history about of Whitby. Next slide please. Then across town to, in order to connect the, the audience with the history because young people are not so much for reading little pamphlets and things like that. Uh, we're thinking of putting hidden AR stencils so people, when people um, come across them, they can uh, reach the phone, take a picture of it, and an AR explanation of the story or the relevant um, history of that place um, would have with Whitby connecting them with the story and the history. Next slide, please. Then we were thinking also making a exclusive dark ice cream. So the local ice cream shops of the place would sell this dark, either you could pick black or white or just mix and that would become a, a staple of their summer and would be kind of thing and that is it next slide please yeah That's so that would be right. thank you team 
Thank you. Good work. Who's next? L and Gigi. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hey, who are you representing? Sulcum with Nikki. I believe Nikki's still here. Yes, Hi, Nikki. Hello. 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 Right, right, next I'll... slide, please, Mark. So we all know Sulcum is absolutely heavenly. You've got a much warmer water temperature than everyone else year round, white sand, seahorse colonies, a friendly dolphin, a beautiful town on a hill that looks like a little Italian village. It feels a world away from England. So we thought you know, with people not actually being able to travel far away, why don't we make Sulcum as a little stunt to get it going, really feel like a world away. Next slide, please, Mark. So uh, we appreciate that Sulcum's all about like that kind of quintessential Britishness. So this isn't like a long running thing, but it would just be a little thing to gain some press to launch this summer to bring everyone back to Sulcum. Next slide, please, Mark. So this is a, an example of how it would look um, in the media. And we're gonna launch our idea um, where Sulcum is gonna turn back its clocks to create um, a new time zone that will mean the sun will rise. It'll be more daylight throughout the day in Sulcum because we'll be an hour behind everyone else. So technically Sulcum will have more sunlight and daylight in the summer than anyone else. Um, so that kind of gives holiday makers that going abroad sort of feeling. Next slide please, Mark. Um, we are also going to turn uh, tourist shops in Sulcum. Um, we're going to call them duty free um, to make it feel like that special holiday experience. And then next slide, please, Mark. And then if you go to duty free or any other like tourist attracts, attractions, you'll be able to get a stamp in your passport, which claims that you went to Sulcum in the summer of 2020. Next slide, please, Mark. You'll also be able to tag Sulcum Sumer. What does that mean, Gigi? Right? I see. So we're going to use geotagging to make it feel like, you know, when you're scrolling down an Instagram feed and you see your friend in Sulcum Sumer, you're like, oh, what a lovely place abroad. Or, you know, Costa del Sulcum, you're like, oh, what a lovely place in Spain. But it's actually, it's, we're right here in Britain still. Uh, next slide, please. This is like a super cheap thing to do as well. Um, so like in the Maldives, it's such like an Instagram moment to have swings in the sea and take a picture on them. And we think like it would be such a cheap, easy thing to do. And loads of people would take loads of um, pictures and upload them and promote the town. Next slide, please. Also, so when we have like a dual tone in the UK, but in abroad, so in France and Spain, when you ring, it's just like one long tone so we're thinking could Sulcum change their like tone so when you ring up to book a restaurant or ring up to book a hotel it um sounds like it's a European phone line I don't know if you want to play that mark for like a second to hear it or not and that's it basically that's it, yeah. <laughs> got it yeah. And then again, what we think the media coverage is going to look like after this. So getting far away had never been this close. Sulcum will be back. This summer, Sulcum claimed top spot for its new take on what it means to get away. With a whole host of experiences to make the town feel miles from Blighty, it won over our hearts, heads and wallets. And so that's our little stunt idea for Sulcum. Thank you. Great. Thank you, team. Hey, Nikki, any first thoughts from you? Oh, absolutely gobsmacked. That is fantastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get that seen by all the tourist people um, and the agents and everybody. That is just fantastic. I'm, yeah, well done, girls. That's just brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, I'm very, very impressed. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, superb job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great feedback. We'll make sure you get a copy of this. Uh, brilliant. To share yes. With your with your, with your uh, community. Thank bodies. you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, DJ. Hey DJ, who are you representing? Oh, I'm some toast. Oh, mate, I've lost you. Sorry, who are you representing? Some toast. Some Ives, great. Anybody from some Ives with us? No, again, anybody um, that from some Ives will try and find and will try and make sure they, they get a chance to watch this later. Floor's all yours. Okay, so um, St. Ives was a place of inspiration. Um, because of the lights and the scenery. But it was also a place where uh, famous artists such as Barbara Hepworth 
became uh, made her name. And this arguably might not have been possible in places like London, which were far more traditional and uh, uh, yeah, far more traditional. Fast forward to today, and women are still underrepresented in art. Uh, next slide, please. And domestic violence has more than doubled during lockdown. Um, and we know art therapy is known to help people with uh, depression, anxiety, and trauma. Next slide, please. So the Tates and Ives will send blank postcards and paintbrushes and paint to any women who have been victims of domestic violence for free. They can pa paint privately and will be guided through uh, the third, uh, sorry, they will be guided through the therapeutic process online uh, on St. Ives uh, Council website and on the, the St. Ives Tate website. Next slide, please. Uh, this will lead up into a uh, art fair on International Women's Day where uh, St. Ives will host female artists such as um, uh, Paulette Hayes, who did the work in the bottom left, uh, bottom right here, which is all themed around domestic violence. So this on the bottom right, she did a collection of uh, these kind of house shaped uh, wallpaper buildings and they all featured uh, the ways and the stories in which the women had lost their lives. Um, and at this art fair on International Women's Day, there will be a space reserved uh, where women can send in their, uh, their postcards from therapy and they can have them dis displayed uh, privately or with their name if they wish. Thank you. Oh, mate, that's great. That's moved on so much since this morning. That's, um, yeah, really good job. Look forward to seeing that get crafted up in your book as well, but also excited to see sometimes see this and see what, what, what they can do to, to a really important subject. Well done. Thank you. Uh, who's next? It's Holly and Lawrence. Hi, uh, it's just me. Lawrence is uh, celebrating his birthday today. Oh, fair. Um, <laughs> Anybody from Studland uh, Beach with us? Studland's in Paul. No, again, we'll try our best to make sure that, that this gets seen. Yeah. Yours. Next slide. So there are 3.8 million people that identify as a naturist in the UK and more than half of Brits say they would try going on a nudist holiday or go on a nudist beach because of things like fast fashion and stuff like that. So next slide, please. We want to bring people to Studland Bay for the best nudist beach in the UK. So all of our posters are questions that we found that are popular questions on nudist beaches like, can I keep my glasses on? Next slide, please. Uh, what happens if I get an erection? Next slide, please. And can I tell someone they look good? So we just want to normalise this and uh, get people interested and feeling comfortable enough to go. Next slide, please. The other thing we'll have is starter packs for people that are new to naturism or just want to try out the beach. So we'll have the Studden Bay pitch tips and tricks to encourage people to stick to the rules and make sure no one feels uncomfortable. We'll have a very high factor sun cream because there are delicate areas of our body that haven't seen the sun before, so it might get burnt more easily. There is uh, a little towel to cover you up uh, if you need to, and a see-through ball. Next slide, please. Um, and we're also gonna have bay buddies. So if people are new and they want to uh, have someone who knows the area and a bit more into nudism help them along the way than they can with their bay buddy. That's it. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, who's up next? Katie and Sophie. Hello. Hi team, where are you representing? Um, so we're doing Brighton. Brighton. Anybody from Brighton? I think there is. Yes, me. Yeah. Hey, how are you, Carmen? I'm fine, thank you. All right, the floor's all yours, team. Um, okay, so this is an idea we had this morning, um, Sophie and I. So if you like the concept of it, we would really, really love to um, take this further for you. Um, yeah. 
So basically, um, many seaside towns across the UK will suffer this summer, running the risk of becoming ghost towns. But Brighton is well and truly on the map, as we all know, because it benefits from visitors all year round. So with the cancellation of Brighton Pride this summer, it seems only fitting that the city, which is known for its strong community focus and liberalism, sends out a message of support to other places in need. Uh, introducing Don't Visit Us, Go Spread the Love Elsewhere. So we want Brighton to come out in support of other seaside towns asking visitors to go elsewhere. Next slide. Um, so we're going to have posters, like they'll be all around London um, because Brighton is a kind of favourite of Londoners to go and visit um, as like a seaside summertime destination. Next slide. Um, so they're going to like suggest other amazing seaside towns that you can go to that are all like within easy reach, the same kind of distance. Uh, next slide. Um, so they'll also feature around Brighton itself because like obviously Brighton reg residents can like venture elsewhere for their seaside holidays. Next slide. Um, so we kind of want to put them all together so they link up like a route around train stations, maybe around Soho. Um, and we also, we haven't had a chance to craft it, but we wanted to create, you know, the seaside cutouts where you poke your face in and um, take like the picture. I feel like that's kind of like quite quintessentially Brighton. So we wanted to put them around, but um, promoting like other great seaside towns to go to. Next slide. And then on Google Maps, we thought every time somebody searches for Brighton, other seaside destinations could <laughs> pop up as suggestions. So encouraging people to branch out and explore other places. So basically, we just think this is the perfect opportunity for Brighton to show off its amazing, generous nature and to spread the Brighton love far and wide. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Hi, Carmen. Hi. You've, you've obviously watched me saying, don't visit Brighton on the telly. <laughs> we <laughs> haven't, but that's if what you are saying, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I'd worry about is we do actually want people to come back eventually. Yes, of right. course. Think, yeah. um, you, we could use it in the context of then getting the others kind of going, you could go back to Brighton now or something like that. Yeah, totally. I think it's something back in the autumn. Yeah, it's something fitting for this summer, I think, that yeah. be just a real kind of PRable thing that people would talk about how kind of selfless Brighton is yeah. as a place and kind of caring. So, yeah. Like, I okay. want it, okay. it kind of positions Brighton as like the ultimate seaside destination because it's the place it's saying that everyone does want to go there almost too much. So, that's that. true, yeah. particularly at the moment. Um, yeah, they also come to Hove a lot. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, great idea. I thought it was funny. I liked your um, rainbows and the, the, um, the tube map type thing as well. Yeah, we thought you could have a lot of fun with that. So Okay, well, send us the video and I will share it with my colleagues. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, so you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. All right, Alfie and Bastian. Send your Bastian stuff up. Hello. Yeah, good face Alfie. to you. Bonjour. Bonjour. Where are you representing? Uh, Home Bay. Home Bay. Indeed. Anybody from Home Bay on this call? No. Again, we'll do our best to, to get somebody from Home Bay to, to see this video uh, a little bit later. All right. So, yeah, one of the worst things about going on holidays is going, to the, going on the beach and it being packed out, especially in these corona riddled times. So, Home Bay, I mean, the Herne Bears will know it's quite an average seaside town. Nothing especially stand out about it. So we wanted to advertise the fact that no one wants to come to Herne Bay and show it as a strength one rather than a weakness. So here we've got, you don't have to get up and at the crack of dawn to avoid people. The footnote town, now half from London. Uh, one more slide, please, Mark. No one wants, no, sorry. No one comes to see the brown cliffs of Herne Bay. Footnote town, one more time. One more slide, please. And this is a slight nod to people who might know about Whitstable. So a better town next door doesn't beat a private beach. One more, please, Mark. Leave the dog walk at the track behind. One more, please, Mark. People go to Whitstable to watch the sunset. 
and I think that's the last one, or maybe there's one more. No, it's not. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Amy has just sent a message saying that they wanted just to watch this recording. So I hope you enjoyed it. And, awesome. Uh, Alfie took a lot. Did you take all those photos yourself or a lot of them? Yeah, yourself? all of them were mine. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I've got nice. green if they need them. <laughs> Good work. Thank you, team. Thanks. All right, Izzy and Charles. So, um, well, hi, Izzy. Hi. Charles with you. Hey, Charles. So hi. you are doing Hove. Does uh, cover, do you cover Hove as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm much more Hove than Brighton, actually. I live in Hove and I'm a counsellor for um, a, a, a ward in Hove. So. I mean, Hove's much more chill, doesn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Thank Team you. Hove. Look at two you for the price of one. Double bubble, I know, right? Mm. Okay, so our insight is basically that there is kind of a tension between Brighton and Hove because Brighton's always really busy, whereas Hove is kind of like Brighton, but calmer and more civilised. Um, and also people tend to park in Hove to get to Brighton. So we kind of wanted to mm. leverage the fame, the fame of Hove's famous neighbour and show that holidaymakers have a more laid back and less frantic alternative that's kind of cooler in its own right. Um, next slide, please. So these are our posters. Next slide. <laughs> next slide, please. And next slide, please. Next slide. So as our activations, we thought that we could steal away Brighton goers, drawing them into visiting home <laughs> when they initially parked there, asking them to stay by putting tickets on their car. Next slide, please, Mark. Also, to help people understand the difference and build some PR, Hove can build the green wall, a wall of flowers which identify the borders between Hove and Brighton. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you. That's me. That's that's really interesting. It's really interesting. I think some of my Hove colleagues would love this. Um, so um, I think um, the only thing that I don't like about this is the parking because um, I don't know if you are aware, but we're a very, um, well, we've got a lot of green councillors in Brighton and Hove and we're trying to, um, we're trying to discourage car use, but Hove does have actually a station as well. So I think that could be quite easily adapted and kind of mm -hmm. go, Hove is the place you get a train to when Brighton's too busy, but you know, you mm -hmm. can come and stay in Hove or something like that. So that's a really good idea. So Brilliant. Um, I shall um, I shall share this one with my colleagues as well. Thank you very much indeed. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you Carmen. Well done team. All right, Taryn and Rachel. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so technically the town we were going to do is um, Eggilwist Park in um, Mid Wales, but um, we, there wasn't a lot in the town, so we took this one Michelin star restaurant that's um, supposed to have the greatest chef in the world right now and um, provides a 19 course meal and we tried to position it as a culinary pilgrimage. The next slide please. Yeah, let's just show you what we're doing. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yep. So these are the posters for them. We wanted to kind of highlight the idea that, you know, if you're a real foodie from London who's been all the places in shortage, that this is the one, this is like the next step into your foodum. Next slide, please. And yeah, we thought we'd also have um, preachers who'd go to um, food markets across London and um, tell people, you know, the good news. Um, <laughs> that's everything. Yep. Great. Thank you, Tim. Again, we'll do our best to make sure somebody from the region sees this. Um, that was great. Thank you. All right, Alice and Phil. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Hey, My name is Philip Laskaris. We're, we're representing, uh, is anybody from Anglesey in the house? No, that's okay. 
<laughs> well, well, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. Uh, before we start, I just want to get in the mood real quick. I have an oyster here. Uh, I'm just going to down that. Okay, we've already got two minutes, Philip. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, uh, next slide, please, Mark. After lockdown, uh, you're going to need a hard. You're going to need a harder and break. I mean, I know I do, but you don't want work following wherever you go. Uh, you need an escape, somewhere you can enjoy the beauty of your holiday, uh, independent of your work life. Um, but unfortunately, between your computer and your phone, work seems to be able to reach you everywhere. But not in Anglesey. Next slide, please, Mark. You can't be reached in Anglesey because in Anglesey, we have the worst coverage in the UK. You're welcome. Next slide, please, Mark. Actually, keep it right there. Keep it right there. <laughs> Um, our campaign is three-pronged, so we have a social media campaign, a telemarketing campaign, and a series of PRable events Angle so you can run. Now you um, can hit the next slide. The next slide. Uh, so here are the social posts we believe would sell not only that you can break away from work, but also show what can be done when you're not looking at your phone. I'll give you a minute to take those in. Oh, and, and they, have, they have some puffins there. So. And they have some puffins there, some beautiful puffins which I learned today can fly at almost 88 kilometers an hour. Sorry, uh, next slide, we've got a couple more. And... All right, next slide. So the telemarketing campaign uh, hammers home the point. Um, where you are currently, anyone can reach you, but on Anglesey, it's just you and whoever's lucky enough to come along. Um, these both come in text and telephone call for formats. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't read these out, but if you want, I can give you a call later. Uh, and the next slide, please, Mark. And lastly, we have two ideas that we believe Anglesey can run for more PR, uh, a competition that we think would excite at least half the nation uh, and a few more that haven't admitted it yet. That says, win a massage with Gavin, Gethin, Glynn, and Gareth, Anglesey's kind of 4G coverage. Um, and then also we thought that at the piers in Anglesey, we could offer the opportunity, opportunity to throw your phone into the water with no harm done because of a waterproof phone case. And then it'll be collected at the end of your stay. Uh, we've chosen not to do posters because everyone is at home. Uh, no one is looking at posters. We think social media, telemarketing, and these different PRable events would, uh, would be the best way to reach people. So yeah, visit Anglesey for the worst coverage in the UK. You're welcome. Also, I'd just like to quickly add that they have plenty of restaurants that do delivery, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good work, team. All right, Sam and Ivan. Hello, everyone. Uh, Carmen, if you're still here, we would love, uh, love to present this to you because this is, this is about Brighton. Yay, fat. Three? Excellent. She gets three. She does. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that makes it all worthwhile. Wow. Excellent, excellent. So, um, some people uh, really hate sand. It gets really? everywhere. It gets in the car, it gets in your hair, sometimes mm. it even gets in your food. Very unpleasant. Next slide, please. Uh, which, which is lucky um, because Brighton doesn't have any sand on its beaches. It's all pebbles. Mm. Um, so that makes uh, Brighton the perfect beach getaway for people that hate sand. Why did, why did you never think of that before? I have no idea. Mark, <laughs> please. <coughs> so uh, our posters um, just sort of sell this fact very simply. You can't skim a sand. That's why Brighton rocks. Visit Brighton, a sand-free zone. Um, you'll never find a pebble in your butt unless of course you're into that kind of thing. That's why Brighton rocks. Next slide, please. And this is for the pebble lovers out there, of which I'm actually not being funny now, but the pebble community is, is large and dedicated to smooth rocks. So if you appreciate the uniquely satisfying hand feel of a good pebble, you'll think Brighton rocks. Okay. And <laughs> commemorative uh, key rings that say, sand sucks, Brighton rocks. <laughs> and that is Brighton, a sand-free zone. That's brilliant. 
Thank you. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. I'll just show you something. Can you see my collection? <laughs> We've got a pebble lover. <laughs> I'm a pebble lover. Uh, Amazing. Okay, so lover. how do you want to sort this out? We take a chair or... <laughs> <laughs> um, I can pay you in smooth rocks. Um, <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> Sure, Brilliant. We'll well, it's fantastic. We've got a three. That's, that's just amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, seriously, um, this is, I think, actually a genuine selling point for a lot of people. Um, I, think, I think it may well be, you know, you're right. Point of view, make some yeah. noise. Yeah, it's back annoying. To <laughs> Thank you, team. We'll make sure that Colin's got all three presentations Please. and she knows how to find you. Um, Awesome, it looks like maybe we'll do a lot of business down, down on the south coast. Down oh, yeah. Surprise well. Well. Busy summer down in the south. Nice. Hey. Um, thank you very much. Go, so that was brilliant timing as well. Brilliant. Right. Thank Tom, you. Thank you so much for- Well done, all. everybody. It's just been amazing. And I, I'd probably quite like to have a copy of almost all of these. Well, all of them, because they're all great. Everything I've seen so far is great. And it's nice the way that you can highlight a particular message and kind of play that out and think outside the box. So I think that's been really good. Beautiful. Spread the word and we'll share this video with you later. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Stay, stay, stay well. <laughs> and uh, we've you. Still more work okay. to look at though, haven't that's we? All. Who's next? Sapphire and TCJ. Unfortunately, it's just me, I think, Mark, but okay. um, have to crack on. Um, so Saf and I have been looking at Blackpool all week um, and like, it's a fascinating, fascinating place. But if you just go to the next slide for me, we found this incredible fact, which was, despite the fact that it's got this reputation as the Las Vegas of Britain, I think people think of it as staggered hen dudes and not the, not the nicest place in the world. It actually has the cleanest air in the country. It's also got some of the cleanest beaches and some of the, the freshest water. Uh, but we really want to focus on the idea of the cleanest air because we think we can really change how Blackpool is perceived. Um, so how do we do that? How do we spread that message? Well, if you go to the next slide for me, our idea is that the worse the air gets in other places, then of course it should be easier to visit Blackpool because you want to get to where the air is the best. So how do we make that easier for people? Go to the next slide for me. We're going to partner with lastminute.com and we're going to fix their, their pricing algorithm so that wherever you are, your price to visit Blackpool depends on how good the air quality is around you. So when air pollution goes up, the cost of your trip to Blackpool goes down. Go to the next slide for me, Mark. So we've got a couple of, got some posters and for this, just trying to get that message across. Um, so don't cough up a lung or an arm and a leg. And the next slide as well is just another poster for this, this campaign. Um, be smug out the smog. But what we think is really cool about this, if you go to the next slide for me, is that this is a changing thing. Air quality changes over time. So we can have programmatic posters in the places of the cities with the worst air quality. So that's Earl's Court in London. Um, you could have a 48 sheet changing minute by minute with an inbuilt pollution detector detecting those changes in nitrous oxide or, or PM 2.5 um, air quality. And you can see, and you can get that drive, that call to action to go to Blackpool. Um, next slide please Mark and then so finally when you're in Blackpool people normally leave with with individual well lots of lots of little sands or um, very small pebbles um, but we think that we can actually give people bottled Blackpool air to take away with them souvenirs or souvenirs if you will um, and that's our idea thank you very much that's great thank you there's nobody from Blackpool in this call is there or is there no again we'll, we'll do our best Tommy to make sure that um, that somebody from Blackpool or, or the area gets to see this. That was fantastic. Cheers, Mark. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much. Now, mentors, um, if you're uh, still around, would you mind putting your screen on just to, um, we'll, we'll wrap up. Hey, Richard, Ian, are you still with us? Um, Hello. Wow. Um, we've got to go soon because we're about to get a live brief from another agency um, at 4.30. So in 20 minutes time, and I'm sure everybody just needs a little bit of a break to reflect and take in. But, um, wow, we saw where they were this morning and they were here now. And I set this brief four days ago. Um, so this, is, this was done in four days, two thirds of the way through the year. 
uh, without very much more than just put a town on a map. And this is now what the students are producing two thirds of the way through the year. Wow. What, what do you think, Richard? Give us your, your first thoughts. Well, I mean, it, it might sound like I'm just saying this, but I, I'm genuinely a, a, astonished at the quality of the thinking across all of those campaign ideas. It, not just how some of them have really brought it all to life just in the last five hours, which was amazing in itself, but um, idea after idea was rigorous, practical, brilliantly executed, firm foundations and fun and true. I, I think that was, I mean, that's kind of the first time I've seen you all as a group do your thing. Uh, it's supremely impressive. I'm blown away. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, Ian, sir. Well, it makes me proud, it really does. It's such wonderful work and and it, yeah, it's just wonderful, isn't it? And in four days, everybody's got some really original, well thought out, well executed, unique work. It's just absolutely fantastic. I really am thrilled by everything. It's just great. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wrap up and say this. Um, when I wrote this brief last weekend or the weekend before, and I said this to you uh, after you know the, the bank holiday weekend, so you got this on Tuesday morning, my brief was, let's try and put a town on, a town on a map. Let's try and sell a town. And I thought it would be fun. The twist I told you was I thought it would be fun to then release this video and invite towns to see that we were thinking about them and get their feedback. So I thought this brief was about selling a town. But watching this, every single one of you has sold yourself. You know, when we release this film, um, and invite towns to see it, I'm hoping agencies are nosy and decide that they want to see it as well. Because every single one of you pitched better than the average creative director, your work was better than most agencies, and it was very current, and it was well researched. And you did it in four days, mm -hmm. under lockdown. Yeah. I'm off to have a drink and think about that. Uh, I'll put the um link up for your live brief briefing in slack in about five minutes time we're meeting the agency at 4 30 straight after that we go to reflections um, and then you've got your your quiz uh, but well done and i'll see you i'll see you in uh, in the next zoom call thanks everyone <laughs>